Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Mike's DVDs and Blu-rays. Um, it's the holiday season, and um, what better time to talk about war movies? Uh, I got a big old stack of war movies today to talk about. Uh, my usual studio place, kind of section, small little cubby hoe that I work in and make these little videos have turned into the Christmas room. So uh, we have a tree up and... Um, stuff like that so let's get right to those war movies um basically they're not just war movies they're basically uh men on a mission movies like there's all kinds of movies out there uh where a group of guys go in and they're on a mission uh say the dirty dozen is a good example uh usually they revolve around an army a uh, group, maybe a group of uh, like really bad soldiers or something, their last chance, you know, put them together like the Dirty Dozen. Um, or there's also the uh, mercenary genre of like type of war movie where you got a guy going in to assassinate someone, uh, stuff like that. But there's always, there's a multiple. Uh, kind of genre, I guess you could say, of men on a mission. So some of these are, um, I guess you could say they're just straight up like war movies, I guess, but they're all, they're all mission related. It's not just guys on a battlefield. So let me stop talking and get right to it. Um, the first movie I want to show is a movie. I want to make sure I'm saying the right time. It came out in 65. It's directed by one of my favorite directors, Anthony Mann. And uh, it's called The Heroes of Telmark. And um, has Kirk Douglas in it, uh, Richard Harris. And uh, it's got Michael uh, Redgrave in there. Uh, really good movie. Um, basically, they're going in, they're uh, trying to get a uh, scientist out of a Norwegian laboratory where he's developing heavy water, which, you know, is a uh, critical element to making nuclear weapons so it's kind of like they're stopping the nazis before they develop nuclear weapons towards the end of the war and everything so they're uh, kind of dropped in and they do a mission but it's a great movie the heroes of telmark um next one is a three pack i, I was i was on the fence about buying one of these movies now one of the movies on here is play dirty Stars Michael Keat or Michael um, Kane, gosh, from 1968, and there's a great um, Region B Blu-ray. Um, I want to say Masters of Cinema, uh, but um, I was like, man, I want to get this movie too. So they had this DVD three-pack, and it was you know kind of economical. Um, but uh, the movie Play Dirty, which was a movie I've never seen before. Um, you know, it's about a World War II squadron of ex-criminals. Um, they're ordered to destroy this North African outpost. So they're all put together. And Michael, Michael Caine is kind of, uh, he's kind of a notch above these guys. So he kind of gets stuck with this group and he's trying to do everything by the book. And he learns that, you know, he's going to have to do it the hard way. So where the title comes, Play Dirty, he's going to have to really do it a different way to get to get the mission done. So it's a great movie, Play Dirty. Um, next movie, The Dogs of War, another great movie. Um, I was on the fence about buying a great movie with um, uh, Christopher Walken, uh, 1978. Um, it was directed by John Ir Irvin. Uh, it's basically a uh, Frederick, uh, uh, was it Frederick F Forsythe, uh, best-selling best-selling book, whew, tongue twister, uh, about a, a gang of mercenaries hired by a shadowy cartel to dethrone an African dictator. It also has Tom Berenger in it. It's really good. Um, and um, finally, on this one right here. Uh, the Purple Plane with Gregory Peck. I wasn't really sure about it, but it, it's a pretty good movie. It's a pretty good, it starts out really good and then it kind of stops and it kind of turns into a love story. 
you know. It's about kind of, it's about a pilot who's kind of shell-shocked, so to speak. He's, you know, he gets in the plane and he wants to like almost dive and stuff. He's like hallucinating, you know, he's shell-shocked basically. So he ends up, he ends up on this island um, that's in the English territory, part of World War II, one of the island outposts. And uh, kind of falls in with this this native girl, kind of falls in love. And then it started with a love story, and then I basically just like, eh. I pulled, I pulled the trigger, man. I, I, I was just out. So maybe I will rediscover it sometime. But uh, it's, got, it's got Gregory Peck in it, which he's always good. Directed by Robert Parrish. Um, he's, uh, he's no slack when it comes to directing movies. So, yeah, I recommend this. It's this three-pack action. Um, you can find it most places and then i got another three pack of war movies this is a uh, mgm ua uh three pack war movies uh it's got the battle of britain force 10 from navarone uh the mckenzie break and um i had never seen the mckenzie break or the battle of britain well actually i did see the battle of britain but the real the real good one on here was the mckenzie break i, I, I have never seen it, it was a great POW camp movie um, where, um, let me see, it's got uh, Brian Keefe. He plays this uh, captain who's a fast talking, hard drinking, tough guy, you know. Uh, he gets assigned to investigate um, this camp that just keeps having these uh, escapes impending, and they're planning a big escape. Uh, it's a group of German POWs, and um, He's trying to get to the bottom of it, and there's a lot of stuff going on. These guys are just evil. These Nazis are the, like, they're just, whew. So he, I don't know, it's a great movie. I don't know how I've never seen it. Um, it came out in 1970, uh, and it's directed by Lamont Johnson, which I was like, I don't know. But Force 10 from Navarone is basically the sequel of sorts to um, The Guns of Navarone. But uh, it's it's an interesting movie. It's really good. It's it's definitely the prototype for the men on a mission um, movie that I'm kind of the basis of this. So you have to include Force Ten from Navarone. They kind of they're going to go in, destroy this uh, uh, dam to uh, flood out the the Nazis were doing some blah blah blah. But it's it's a great movie. Pretty good. I mean, slam bam. Thank you, ma'am. It's a two-hour movie. Uh, Harrison Ford and um, let's see who's all in here. Robert Shaw, who you might know from uh, I think Jaws, right? Robert Shaw? No, no, not Robert. Maybe uh, it's got Bob, Barbara Bach, uh, Edward Fox, and Franco Nero is in it. Uh, and it's uh, directed by Guy Hamilton, which is a James Bond director of many movies and uh, the battle of britain is a 132 minute uh war story about the battle of britain uh, basically a lot of air battles it, it kind of covers the royal air force during the battle of britain and um stuff like that so it's it's really good um it's it's, it's got a good cast it's a harry saltzman production so another James Bond alumni, directed by Guy Hamilton again, but it's got a big cast. It's got uh, Michael Caine returns to this one, Harry Andrews, uh, Trevor Harrell, Howard, Kurt, Kurt Jurgens, Ian McShane, uh, Lawrence Olivier, Christopher Plummer, Michael Rigge, Redgrave returns to this, Ralph Richardson, Robert Shaw returns to this one, Susanna York, Patrick Weimark. It's got a big cast of British stars. So, again, this is another economy pack that you can get, like, on Amazon, um, probably for under 10 bucks. I can't remember how much it was. It wasn't very much. Um, but this one kind of splits them up into... One of them has two movies on one disc, which kind of kind of packs it all in there. But, but maybe one day I will get the... Uh, deluxe play dirty uh region b release or masters of cinema i believe because that's a great movie i really like it and i'd like to find a great release of the mckenzie break and because that was a great movie 
Uh, next up, I got a two-pack edition of war movies. Uh, this one has the Devil's Brigade, Brigade, and the bridge at uh, Remagen. Remagen. I always, I always pronounce. I always say Remagen. Uh, these were both uh, David Walper uh, productions. Uh, the Devil Brigade. Um, I was on the fence about getting the Kino uh, Classics Blu-ray release of it, and um, I just couldn't find one. I wanted to get it for under fifteen dollars. I just couldn't find one, so I, I, I was like, "Well, let me kill two birds with one stone. Let me get this movie because Bridget uh, Remagen is pretty good." So I got got both of these but the devil's uh, brigade has william holden he's a heroic cool under file performance give or gives a heroic cool under fire performance as a leader of world war ii renowned first special service force in a fact-based battle filled saga that also stars christopher christopher cliff robertson oh man i have totally missed this one up i'm so sorry um, all goofiness aside, it's a great movie. Um, I'm kind of glad I got this because, I mean, it kind of falls short here and there, but overall, it's a great Men on a Mission ep, uh, movie. And uh, The Bridge at uh, Remagen is a little bit, might be a little bit better, actually. It's got George Siegel, Robert Vaughn, Ben Gazzara, and Bradford Dillman in it. And it's Advancing Troops and retreating German forces converge on the last bridge on the Rhine River in Germany. It's a true life World War II powerhouse that stars uh, George Siegel. And uh, this was a uh, directed by John Gillerman and has music by Elmer Bernstein. Um, let's see, any other co-stars on here? It's got a guest star, E.G. Marshall, which he popped up a lot in stuff back then. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a good for your money. I mean, if you're on the fence about getting The Devil's Brigade on Kino, um, it, it's, it's good for your money because you're going to get it cheaper and you got something a little extra. But the only drawback is it's DVD and, you know, it's kind of... I think they're both on one disc. Yeah, they're both on one disc, which... They're squeezing a 132-minute and a 117-minute movie onto one disc. So you're going to lose a little bit of image and noise and they're going to have some issues there. But overall, I uh, totally recommend that. Next up is a great movie. I've waited for a while to see this. Um, you might see the, the trailer in the background uh, for the movie. Um, it that really inspired me to do this video. And um, I hear uh, Quentin Tarantino is a big fan of this movie. And um, I kept seeing it on Amazon, like movies you may like, you know, and I kept seeing it, kept seeing it. And it, you know, I noticed it was Warner Archives. So I was like, man, Dark of the Sun, what is that? Dark of the Sun, Dark of the Sun. It looks like it'd be fun. You know, the cover's got the guy with a the chainsaw. There's like a chainsaw fight. Um, it's called Dark of the Sun, and uh, it um, came out in 1968. Uh, it's directed by uh, Jack Cardiff, who uh, is a uh, very famous uh, cinematographer who worked with um, the likes of. Um, uh, worked, he, he worked with, um, gosh, uh, the Archers. Uh, he worked with uh, David. Man, I am having a total, total brain fart right now. Uh, let me see here. Uh, David Lean. Oh my gosh, I can't, I can't believe I forgot David Lean. But yeah, he worked with David Lean. He uh, worked with uh, Michael Powell and Mick Pressburger on all their classic uh, movies they did in the 40s and even into the 50s and it um, I don't believe it's his first movie he directed um, but he he directs he does a pretty good job at it at, actually and uh, it's a really good movie it's it's just go into it without any like you know it's kind of politically incorrect at times it's just you know, it's it's just a great all-time kind of silly movie at times, but it's it's badass also. So it's a little mixture of everything. Um, 
but yeah, they're, it's got um, Rod Taylor, uh, Yvette Memuel, Jim Brown, uh, which he does really well in this movie. Um, so it's it's an an elite group of commandos. Uh, they send they're, they're on a do or die assignment, um, and they're on a mission. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, they're going into this place to. Uh, what did, I'm trying to say exactly what they did. They're on a train, basically, across the Congo in Africa. They're headed to a uh, rescuing some c civilians that are in, pale, uh, in, in are being held captive by rebels, rebel forces. Uh, they're recovering a big load of diamonds, um, stuff like that. So it's very, very violent, it's fierce, uh, bloodthirsty. Uh, it's got some real cool scenes with chainsaws, some good fighting, some good aerial shots. It's pretty good movie. It's got a great look to it, of course, with Jack Cardiff uh, directing and everything. And it's just a great fun movie that you can come back to and stuff. And uh, it's just one of those movies. It's kind of in the vein of The Dirty Dozen and Where Eagles Dare. You know, it's kind of like in there. Um, but yeah, it's probably just kind of at the time, it was probably just kind of a cash in on those movies because they were big hits. Um, also on MGM. And uh, they probably just like, hey, let's put out another movie and it'll be cool too. So I think that's what they did, but you know, it's really good. It's pretty, pretty cool. So back to the next movie here. Um, this is a dual pack, uh, The Bridge on the River Kwai and The Guns of Navarone. Now I talked about the uh, sequel, Force 10 from Navarone. Uh, this one is directed by Jay Lee Thompson and um, he ended up not returning. He didn't return to the other one, uh, Force 10. Uh, and what can I say about the river on river, or the bridge on the River Kwai, David Lean's masterful, epic 1957 movie. Uh, both of these are just great movies. Grew up watching these, um, especially, uh, I remember watching The Guns of Navarone a lot. It was on TV and Bridge and River Kwai a lot. So this is a dual disc uh, Blu-ray. I've had this for years. Um, they're both on there and they're, they're both pretty up to date. Um, I think that the Knicks versions that were released after this was the, four, the big 4K one. Uh, for the River Kwai, so it's it still holds up pretty well and um, sounds great, looks great. Uh, so yeah, it's a, it's another you know budget you know deal. You know you're gonna, you're going to get the movies and save a little money at the same time. I try to get more movies. You know, I mean if, if it's a movie I really really want, I'm going to get it a single disc. But you know if I'm I was wanting to see a lot of Men on a Mission movies, and some of these are new. Uh, a lot of these I've had for years because, you know, I've always liked this. So this is a new one I actually got. This is a Steve McQueen movie called uh, Hell is for Heroes. And this was actually a surprise. It was pretty good. Um, let's see, who was it? It was directed by uh, Don Siegel, uh, who would go on and uh, do all kinds of great movies with Clint Eastwood and... Uh, everybody in the 70s. He did a string of great movies. Um, I see it's got, I'm trying to remember, is the, I thought I thought music was by Elmer Bernstein, or maybe not. Uh, but anyways, it's got Bobby Darren, Fess Parker, uh, Steve McQueen. Uh, it's got James Coburn. It's even got a very young Bob Newhart on here. Uh, it's directed by, uh, like I said, Donald, Don Siegel. It's a great World War II movie. Uh, Steve McQueen plays, it's a, it's a young role for Steve McQueen. I think it was 1959 or 60, was it 62? Oh, 62, okay. So he hadn't did The Great Escape yet, which really busted him out there in the big time. So it's a great movie. He's kind of an outsider. He's been in some trouble. Um, they kind of put him with this group and, uh, the group is kind of some messed up guys, you know, and there's a sergeant or, or a major, somebody's trying to lead, get this group together, get them together, move them forward to do this. 
and uh, they're trying to get Steve McQueen to really come in, come in with the group, you know, and stuff. And, and of course, he rises to act, rises to the part when he needs to be the hero and proves himself to be, you know, you know, a hero. So it's it's a great, you know, um, great movie. They another kind of men on a mission, so to speak. But they're actually just um, it's a military war movie where they're just doing, you know, a mission. But it's not like mercenary mission but yeah it's a great movie highly recommend this this is a dvd version i'm not sure if it's on blu-ray but you can get this really cheap uh next up is a three pack from uh, warner brothers uh, it's got operation or objective burma i'm sorry never so few and go for broke now this is great i've seen go for broke a long long time ago it's one of the first older war movies i saw it's pretty, really good uh, Never So Few, Frank Sinatra, um, and uh, Steve McQueen returns. Got Peter Lawford in it. Uh, P uh, Brian Don Levy is always cool. And uh, it's directed by John Sturgis. And uh, it's, a, it's a pretty solid war movie. It takes place on an island. Uh, it's kind of out in the Pacific. Um, and the other one, Objective Burma, is a really good movie with... Um, Oh, gosh, what's his name? Errol Flynn, jeez. Errol Flynn, directed by Ra Raul <laughs> Walsh. And uh, great Warner Brothers movie. Uh, man, when when did this come out? Oh, Lord of my... I can't really tell. I think, it was, I think it was like 43 or something like that. But anyways, yeah, it's another cool triple feature. Uh, this one is two discs. Uh, one disc has two movies, one has its own disc, so pretty cool. I will return in a minute after this small. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, I just stopped for a minute. Um, I remembered a movie um, I wanted to show in this group, so um, I got this recently. Another multi-pack. I should just call this multi-pack men on a mission movie DVDs and Blu-rays. This is called Classic War Films. This was released through Mill Creek Entertainment, which they've been releasing some really good multi-packs. Uh, this one's got Bitter Victory, The Prisoner, Commando Strike at Dawn, uh, Castle Keep, and Young Winston. Uh, what drew me to this was Castle Keep. It was a movie I'd never seen, I've always heard of. There's a great Indicator Region B Blu-ray out there. And, of course, it's out of print now, and it's very expensive. So, um, what I did was I got this and um, for this movie, and I watched it. And I was like, oh, man. It just it kind of lost me. It's, it's kind of psych... It's, it, it was made kind of during 1969. It has, it's not your typical war film. It's hard to explain, so I'm not even going to explain it, but it's different. Let me just put it that way. Um, the other movies, uh, Commando, Strike at Dawn, Paul Muni uh, in that. The Prisoners, a good uh, uh, Alec Guinness movie, Jack Hawkins. And Bitter Victory has got Richard Burton. Uh, Young Winston is about Winston Churchill, uh, Robert Shaw, and Bancroft, uh, directed by Richard Attenborough. So yeah, it's it's a pretty good little uh, little pack. Um, I got this a while back ago, and um, I've, I've recently ordered Castle Keep because I got it during a Black Friday indicator sale, and I got it really cheap. I got it for like I don't know. 15 pounds or something, uh, which, you know, it's not too bad. Uh, since it's out of print now and on eBay, it's like $50, $60. So, um, got that. So yeah, it's got a lot of movies on here. I have, I haven't seen every one of these. I need to, I need to watch, uh, Young Winston and The Prisoner, but, uh, yeah, need to, I need to spin that, but I thought I would include that. Next up, this is one I did a video on before, but I, I couldn't I couldn't resist not grabbing this. This is a movie I grabbed, uh, Kelly's Heroes and Where Eagles Dare, the double pack. I did a video with uh, Warner double packs, and um, 
<laughs> great men on mission movies. Great, great, great. Um, highly watch. I watch this a lot. This stays. This stays out. You know, it just stays handy where I grab it and watch it a lot. So, great movies. Um, still in the vein of Dirty Dozen. Um, Kelly's Heroes got a little little comedy spin on it, but um, Where Eagles Dare, uh, Clint Eastwood, Richard Burton, really good. Clint's in uh, Kelly's Heroes also, but great. Pick this up. Um, I think they're both available single, I believe, on Blu-ray. Or get this. That's cool. So. Next up, uh, this was actually a new movie I released or got re recently. Uh, this is a Kino Lorber or Kino Classics release of uh, Hornet's Nest. And this has a uh, rock, uh, rock Hudson. And this is from 1970. So this is late Rock Hudson. This is Mr. Mustache Rock Hudson. Uh, he did a few cool movies or around 68 to 71. He did, you know, Ice Station Zebra. He did this. He did um, Pretty Maids All in a Row. He did some really interesting movies during this time. Now, this movie, uh, I was a little disappointed. I was a little disappointed in it. It's just, it's a story about um, Rock Hudson's on a mission and he gets parachuted in. Um, he basically survives. Um, it's in, it takes place in Italy. Uh, some young kids who are kind of like little mercenaries defending their town. They're like stealing stuff from the Nazis and stuff. They're a little group of teenage boys. Um, they basically bring them back to where they're hiding out. They kind of nurse them back uh, to health. And then he ends up helping them but the kids are kind of obnoxious at times. You know, there's some great scenes with them, but it's just kind of obnoxious stuff going on with them and stuff. But Rock Hudson's always good in it. It's got, uh, you know, in Ennio Morricone, uh, musical score. Uh, who directed this? Uh, Phil Carson. So he's no, he's no sou uh, slouch either. He's a great director. Uh, but yeah, The Hornet's Nest. I saw the cover and I was like, Hornet's Nest? Hmm. I had never heard of it. So uh, it was on my list for a while and I grabbed it. So um, pretty good. I mean, it's not bad. It's definitely a movie to come back to. Um, and finally, guys, this is another Kino Classics release. This is a movie by Sam Fuller, uh, Fixed Bayonets. Great, great movie from 1951. Uh, this is a great uh, release, actually. It's, it's, it looks really good. It's got some audio commentary on here. Uh, one of its part of the commentaries by his his own daughter Samantha. She does some uh, commentary on that. But yeah, this is a brand new 4K restoration. Um, what can I say about this? This is a great movie. It takes place in the snowy, uh, like in a snowy mountain peak in Korea during the Korean War. So everything's kind of white. They're wearing these like white army fatigues and stuff and uh, and green they're kind of they're kind of mixing up the camouflage and stuff but some great scenes um i i guess this isn't really a mission movie this is just a war film but really talks about the uh com camaraderie of the guys you know coming together and um defending it. So some great, great scenes. I really highly recommend this. There's another one that came out, I think the next year, uh, uh, Sam Fuller would make a movie in 1952 called The Steel Helmet, which is awesome also. And that also stars, uh, I think, is it Richard Basehart that plays the guy, the big dude? Let me see here. Or is it Gene Evans? I think it's Gene Evans as Sarge Sergeant Rock. So it's it's a it's a cool movie, man. Uh, so I highly recommend that fixed bayonets. And um, there's an old Criterion uh, three pack of uh, the early films of Samuel Fuller, and that's got the steel uh, the steel helmet on it. That's what I have. Uh, so I recommend that. I wish they would come out with a Blu-ray of that and stuff. So but that's highly recommended to get that. So yeah, there you go. Ugh. Need a drink of water after all that. But yeah, uh, that about does it, guys. And I just wanted to show some men on a mission movies, some guys with a plan. They're going to parachute in most of the time. 
and, they, and they're going to work to it. A lot of times it's about the, um, the underdogs, the guys that were counted out, that were through in jail, the guys that messed up big time and they were just going to be... They were just going to be booted out of the army, you know, discharged, and they were going to this. But they were given another chance to do a mission. So a lot of these kind of deal with that premise and stuff. So it shows that, you know, you can redeem yourself and, you know, and stuff like that. So, but, but those movies have a lot of good directors, a lot of good stars in it. Great, great stories. Uh, highly recommend any of those. Um, a couple of them are just kind of like, eh, so-so, but, you know, they're definitely all worth a look, uh, especially, you know, like Hornet's Nest, good movie, worth a look. It, it's not a tremendous movie, but it kicks butt at times, uh, so, but that's about it, guys, um, about war movies. I think I have some more, but I, I just, I grabbed a few stacks. I had some new ones, too, so... Uh, that's about it, guys. So if you haven't already subscribed to Mike's DVDs and Blu-rays collection, go ahead and subscribe today. Hit the bell to be notified when I release a new video. And um, also comment, what, what, what do you think about these movies? You got any ideals? Any of them, did I leave any out is what I'm trying to say. Um, because there's tons of movies like that. Uh, and... Um, just give me a comment, and uh, if you like this episode, give me give me a thumbs up. I just kind of threw it together today. Um, um, I, I was like, man, should I do a Men on a Mission video? I'm not sure. Hmm. So I kind of got some stuff together. So I hope you liked it, um, and um, that's about it. So uh, if you're watching this before the holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy, 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 Happy. And everybody be safe out there. And I will see you guys in a new episode soon. Take care and bye-bye. Kick the camera.